Sorry, Abe. I couldn't do it. You'll have to... Mr. President, she's at it again. Father, you're going to be killed. I'm in no danger, Mother. They hate you, Abraham. Why must you go to that awful place? Because the Battle of Gettysburg was significant, and it must be recognized. I don't see why. Mary, there were 50,000 dedication of that mass graves an event I must attend. I've been asked to speak. What is there of use to say over the bodies of dead young men? It's my belief that our victory there was a turning point in the war. I wish to deliver a message of unification and hope. Hope? You? You are the most melancholy man I've ever known, Mr. Lincoln. Perhaps so. Mr. President, Secretary Stanton is waiting for you downstairs. All right. Fret not, my dear. You'll have me underfoot for many years to come. we can gather so far, Operation Big Shanty was a failure. Of the 30 men we sent, only one, uh, a Captain Eckert, has survived. And he's apparently gone mad. How so? He's, he's telling stories of walking dead men, cannibalism, insane, clearly. Walking dead men? The Union or Confederacy? Both, he says. Or neither. I don't know. Who controls the fort? It's uh, uncertain. It's, we must control Fort Pulaski. It's, uh... I've been weighing our options. Grant is still at Vicksburg. We could have a thousand troops on site in just a few days. No. We don't know what they'd be facing. We don't know how many rebels still guard the fort. We can't send more men till we understand what happened. I must speak with this wounded officer. 
There's a small wrap parcel in my closet. Would you fetch it for me, please? Miss Secretary, this is Major John McGill, an old friend of mine. Lately, he and my wife share the notion that I am in some danger, and he insists on accompanying me at all times. I think you're putting yourself in some danger now, Mr. President. I must see for myself, then. I believe there is some risk, sir. I'll see that no harm comes to the President. Dr. Malinoff leads the medical team here at Jefferson Bunker. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. President. How's our patient? He hasn't responded to any treatment, and his condition worsens by the hour. He's losing the ability to communicate verbally and growing more violent. I'm afraid we've had to restrain him. I see. This way, gentlemen. Do you know who I am, Captain Eckert? <laughs> what happened? Where's the rest of your patrol? Dead. They're all dead. You are the only survivor? They, they killed everyone. Who? Rebels? You faced Confederates in open battle? Oh, no. No. They're dead, too. Then who did you encounter? So, so many of them from everywhere. They took us and bit us and, and a, 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 a. I don't understand, Captain. <laughs> They ate our flesh! They could not be killed, but they tore us to pieces! What could have done that to a man? What sort of a sickness? Or a poison? Could the rebels have developed a weapon that robs men of their very souls? Turns them into demented cannibals? This is not the work of the Confederacy. Then what are we facing? Mr. Secretary. Has the new Secret Service enough men trained for a mission? Just barely. Good. Ready 12 men for a mission behind enemy lines. Sir? We must send a small team to Fort Pulaski to determine exactly what happened to Operation Big Shanty. We must discover how widespread this infection is. We must locate those missing men, and we must capture that fort if it is within the realm of possibility. I'm afraid I don't understand. If Eckert's affliction is what I think it is, it must be brought under control before it spreads, which it does very quickly. If it spreads too far, it can decimate the population. If the population learns of it, it would spread a panic which would be just as deadly. Do you mean to send 12 agents behind enemy lines against an army of God knows how many men, sickened as Eckert was? I do. Who would lead such a suicide mission? I will, and I know just the men to do it. Being, sir. Captain Eckert, stand down. I do not wish to shoot you. Edwin, is your sword just for show? Is it sharp? Sharp and ever ready, Mr. President. Good man. Give me my parcel from the carriage. Mr. 
Now you see what we're up against? Now, with Major McGill taken from us, no, I... No, you can't go. It's impossible. You said yourself it was a suicide mission. How can I ask another man to go in my place? You're needed here, leading the war effort. The fate of the nation hangs in the balance. You believe me, Edwin, the fate of the nation hangs on the success of this mission. What will be the point of preserving a union populated only by people like Eckert? Yes, Look, but... I possess unique knowledge of the affliction which took Eckert. I am uniquely suited to lead the mission. What you're saying stands against all reason. Imagine a hundred men like Eckert. Now imagine a thousand, women and children too, all the same. Doesn't that stand against reason? You'll spread a story about where I am and what I'm doing. No one is to know that I've left the capital, not even Mary Todd. Yes, sir. All right, we need to leave as soon as possible. Have the conductor stop the train just ahead. This is as far as we can travel by train. Our men would have disabled the tracks on further ahead. From here we're on foot. Let's stop here for a briefing. A gentleman, I presume you all know of the Anaconda plan, our blockade of the South to deny our access to ships and trade. Thanks to General Grant's victories in Tennessee, we have near control of the Mississippi River. We've been effectively starving the Confederacy of needed arms and supplies. However, the blockade must expand if victory is to be ensured with minimum destruction and loss of life. Now, Fort Pulaski lies on a key trading point along the Savannah River on the Georgia coast. It's an area of tremendous tactical importance. Operation Big Shanty was a covert mission to infiltrate and capture that force without the need of a large force. However, the mission was a failure at best. Quite possibly, it was a disaster. So it's a search and rescue mission that we're on then, Mr. President? Something like that. Truthfully, gentlemen, I hold out little hope of recovering our lost troops, but I aim to learn exactly what fate befell them and to complete their mission, God willing, because their aim was a crucial one. Fort Pulaski must be captured. To our fallen comrades! Here, here, here. Here. And to the success of our mission. Here, here, here. What do you think of our fearless leader? It's an honor to be riding with the President of the United States. True enough. But did you vote for him? I was a Douglas man myself. But still, he's a president. And if anyone can hold their nation together, he can. I wonder if he's up to the task. There's a braver man, more strongly held to his convictions. I haven't met him. You want a leader? I'd follow Lincoln straight to hell. You'll probably get the chance, my boy. I'm not your boy.
goes there? Stand fast. Identify yourself. <laughs> It's not too bad. The bullet passed through. Didn't break any bones. Is he otherwise injured? Bitten, scratched. No, not that I can see. Look, are any of you men injured? Hmm? We must know. You're bitten, scratched. Any of their blood get in your mouth or eyes during the fight? Hmm? You see that it stays that way. We must secure the fort. The gate is in clear sight of the rebels. We can't get to it. Then we find the rebels. Sir, in regards to Dunbar. After. Let's get those rebels. Chamberlain, Shaw, Wilkinson, South. You three with me. Brown, secure those gates. Go. I saw them enter at the northeast. Surrender yourselves! 
We have you trapped and you cannot escape. Drop your weapons. Surrender or we will fire. Identify yourselves. I am Thomas Jonathan Jackson, rank of general in the Army of the Confederacy. General Jackson? Stonewall Jackson? I am he. It is an honor to meet you, sir. Well, be that as it may, General. At this time, you must surrender. Or die where you stand. I do not surrender this facility to you, and I'll happily die defending it. So be it. General Jackson. Hey, we've secured the... <laughs> Mr. Chamberlain, that's enough. General, I do not wish to see further blood spill today. You are outnumbered, sir. Will you please stand down? Abraham Lincoln, I had indeed hoped to meet you, albeit under different circumstances. <laughs> Empty. General, might I ask how you came to be in this place? You may ask, sir, but at the moment the far greater question is how will you answer for the murders you have committed this day? Murder? Indeed. I personally witnessed you slaying two unarmed Confederate soldiers mere moments ago. They entered this fort seeking shelter and you cut them down. Uh, quite literally, I might say, with that slave tool hidden in your overcoat. General, you know as well as I do, those men were no longer members of the Confederate Army. I dare say they were no longer men. You lie. They were sick, requiring medical treatment. One of them was an officer. Under the rules of you engagement. You will watch your tone with the president, sir. And you will watch your tone with the general. Stay your hand, Mr. Chamberlain. The moment we face a common enemy far greater than ourselves, whether the general wishes to admit it or not. Why don't we kill these graybacks now? Mr. Brown, am I not destroying my enemies when I make friends of them? No, sir. You destroyed them when you killed them. We must preserve our ammunition. We must attempt to sway the general and his men. They may yet come to see the wisdom of our position on the matter. We will not. Those men merely require medical treatment. Indeed, we have one secured right now. You have one? Yes, protected under lock and key. Well, be that as it may. The first order of business is to secure this fort against further intrusion. General, you and your men can aid us in that effort. We'll not cooperate with the enemy under any circumstance. Suit yourself. Mr. Penn, you'll secure the prisoners. find ourselves in precarious straits and we must carefully blot our course of action. We should leave this place. We can't just run away. Why not? We're on a mission. To hell with the mission. 
I say we leave the rebels to their fate. Get ourselves to safety. That is impossible. We don't even know how many of those sick men are out there. They act like zombies. Like what? Zombies. A Bantu word I learned from my mother. Zombies were corpses brought back to life by magic. But they were only used as slaves. They weren't like this. I too prefer regular slaves. Thank you kindly. We should get some help. And how do you propose we do that? Why not there be a telegraph office in town? At the train station. Unless it's already been disabled, but still, Mr. Pike, that's a good idea. Now you, Agents Hopkins, Wilkinson, Shaw, and I will undertake the journey to town. The rest of you stay here and keep this fort secure. <clears throat> Might I watch the prisoners instead? I'd like to join you, Mr. President. Mr. Brown, I believe you shall have ample opportunities to fight zombies. But for the moment, this is how I would like to divide our forces. Mr. Hawkins, you'll relieve Mr. Gurney on prisoner watch. Now, men, we must do our work in utmost silence. The slightest noise, including gunfire, will awaken them from their standing slumber, bringing danger and death. plans after the war. I'll return to the stage in all likelihood. You're an actor? <laughs> I've done a bit, yes. Come from a long line, actually. Well, that seems like an interesting line of work for a man. <laughs> you have no idea. This isn't promising. Perhaps the device still functions. your home so you can only temporary shelter. We knocked before we broke down your door. Thought the town was completely abandoned save these 
unfortunate souls who wander the streets. It's good to find others who manage to stay safe from infection. Will you not speak? <coughs> Perhaps we can join forces. Please lower your weapons. Lower yours first. <laughs> You'll stop right there if you know what's good for you. We come in peace. Abe? Yes, I am Abraham Lincoln. Mary. Mary Owens, could it really? Mother! After all these years, you coming to my house expecting shelter? I didn't know you'd settled in Savannah. Wait. You two know each other? You know the president? One of my men needs medical attention. A result of your excellent aim. Bring him down. I'll see to it. Mother! Mother, will you explain? It was about your age, visiting your late Aunt Betsy in New Salem. And I met a young man. And we fell in love. And it was all rather magical. When I went home, we wrote letters. And in one of the letters, he said if I returned to New Salem, he'd marry me. So I did. I remember the story. When you got there, he, he never spoke again of marriage, but instead wrote you a letter, setting you free. Of course, I did not wish to be set free. But he gave me little choice in the matter. He's not. Oh no, my dear. You're a bit too young for that. I never lied to you about the provenance of your own birth. Well, this isn't so bad. I have them cleaned up in no time. Hey, this is my daughter, Sophia. And that lovely creature is Annika. They both work for me here. Well, they did before all this began. And that fine young man is Teddy. Theodore Roosevelt, Mr. President, from New York. Teddy was separated from his family in the panic. So we took him in. I'm John Wilkinson, ma'am. This here's Mr. Shaw. And that's Mr. Hopkins, bleeding on your fine oak floor. It's nice to meet you, boys. Why'd you stay? My carriage was stolen as we were preparing to leave. I thought we'd just hold out until help arrived. Are you the help? About as much as you can expect. The rest of my men are holding Fort Pulaski. Uh, we should evacuate to there as soon as you're finished with Mr. Hopkins. And how do you propose we get past the unfortunates? Is there another way out beside the front door? Back door in the alley. How you fix your ammunition? We won't go down without a fight. All right. All right. Mr. Shaw, you and I will create a diversion at the front door that will attract the zombies and will allow the rest to escape out the back. Yes, Mr. President. Can you make it, Mr. Hopkins? We have women and children to protect now. That's a rise to the occasion, Mr. Wilkinson. Nobody needs to protect me. I can take care of myself. I'm sure you can, young man. I'm sorry we don't have a spare weapon for you. Here. As you go, walk softly and carry this big stick. May I have the honor of walking beside you, Miss Annika? All right, then. As soon as I get Mr. Hopkins bandaged, we can go. Mr. Wilkinson will lead you directly to the fort. We'll meet you there. Fret not, Miss Owen. I rarely do, Mr. Lincoln.
Buckshot, I swear. They didn't get me. She shot me. The lady's got a right to protect herself. And the mission? The telegraph had already been destroyed when we got there. What's your plan, Abe? I wish I had one. I have no way of knowing the total number of zombies as Mr. Brown calls them. We have few men, dwindling supplies, and lack of time. Mary, this epidemic must be contained. And there's nothing of use in this fort? Nothing that we've thus far located. I question his judgment. I do. Mark your words carefully, Mr. Wilkinson. Either he lied to us, or he had no idea what we would face upon our arrival here. We came woefully unprepared. Yeah. We have our training and our wits. Certain death awaits us at every turn. And yet, he finds the time to take up with a... with a pair of whores. He makes a good point. At ease, Mr. Kearney. General, I wish Mr. It. Lincoln, I must strenuously object to the presence of a fallen woman in my fault. <laughs> Miss Owens is an old friend of mine, General Jackson. Be that as it may, it is an affront to decorum and a challenge to discipline. Now, I would say that we have more serious challenges facing us than the question of a woman's repute, General. In fact, I've come to speak to you on that very subject now. Will you sit? Our recent sortie has put into stark terms the situation with which we're faced. We cannot remain in this place indefinitely, and simply leaving is not a possibility. What we need to do is to kill all these zombies. Zombies? Well, that sounds like slave talk to me, sir. These unfortunate people were soldiers, some of them Confederate heroes. Some may be civilians, but all have a right to live. They are already dead. They are simply unaware of the fact. No, they... They're ill. Let's go visit your prisoner. No cure, there's no hope. First of all, there's no chance for a peaceful death. From the moment of infection, you have perhaps 24 hours. Then conversion's complete and you're driven to spread the disease until your body ceases to function. This is pure speculation. You have no idea. I have every idea, General. I've faced this peril before. It 
a mere boy of nine in Indiana. Sickness invaded our town, ravaged our community. There's no reason for it. No explanation we could see. Myths and rumors. Everything from infected meat to black magic, but no real answers. Good people. Friends. Family members all came on. After much bloodshed, we eradicated the disease. At least I thought we had. Till two days ago, when a man returned from this fort thus infected. Disease spreads quickly and mercilessly. The only way to defeat it is to kill every infected person. There's no other way. Noise attracts the creatures, so while a gunshot to the head is effective, it draws more. Perfect aim can be difficult to achieve under stressful circumstances. Beheading them is far safer. General, do you have any swords or blades or other tools secreted here in this fort, sir? Mr. Lincoln, if I had a mobile guillotine, I would not inform you of its presence. You are my enemy, sir, and I shall not aid you in your inhuman endeavor. That is unfortunate, sir. I could use your help. Besides, your people are just as much at risk as mine. Mr. President, I have a suggestion. Over the past few months, I've come to know this town quite well. There's a plantation about a mile from here with many of the implements of the kind you just described. We could go collect these and fashion them into weapons. What's your name, Corporal? Pat Garrett, sir. And you'd work alongside Union men on such a mission? I would. I believe this crisis is bigger than the matters which divide us. In the end, we are all Americans. Very well. Come with me. Go back out there? That's insanity. What makes you think we can trust a Grayback, Mr. President? I believe him to be a man of his word. I will not put my life in the hands of Johnny Reb. Nor I. Nor I. I would go with you, sir. I don't think I'd be much use to you. I see. But well, who will come along on this mission? Sophia and I will join you, Abe. As will I. And I hope that we do run a bunch of them zombies so I can run them back to hell. Your enthusiasm notwithstanding, Mr. Roosevelt. Any luck, we won't encounter any. All right, then. There's no time to spare. Distance back to safety is too far to risk a race. If I may, miss. Silence is best, Mr. Shaw. Yes. But I was wondering. How'd you come to find yourself in this circumstance? You ever heard of zombie hunting or prostitution? Oh, I, uh, I only meant... It's the only amount of work available for women like my mother and me. Especially around here. The world doesn't look too kindly upon an unmarried woman and her bastard daughter, Mr. Shaw. I don't mean to judge you, Sophia. They never do. Perhaps if we survive this ordeal, I could call upon you someday. <laughs> These tools will be in the barn. Now remember, step carefully. Quietly. Why 
Why don't they attack us? I think they're sleeping. Count your blessings, they don't. President, I thought you could do some help. Let's go! Go, go, go! Open the gates, they're coming! Fog is descending, more like spreading from my very center. Too much pain. It's no worse than childbirth. Mary, I lack words to express my sorrow to you. Not only for your current condition, of course, for my actions so many years ago. I loved you. I love you still. I've never cared for another as I have for you. Never. I was young, I was foolish. And I accepted questionable counsel. Truth was, I felt unworthy of you. I do not ask for your forgiveness. But I give it freely, Abraham. That is most kind of you. Shall I tell Sophie of your condition? No. I'll tell her. All right. I'll send for her and now come back. 
back and visit your shows again. Be brave, babe. And resolute. You know what must be done. I expect to maintain this contest until successful or conquered or dead. You, Corporal Garrett, will be marked for insubordination. I understand, General. This morning, with charity for none and malice toward all, with the help of Almighty God and this map prepared by Corporal Garrett, we shall endeavor to slay as many of these unfortunate creatures as our strength will allow. Now, you all know the strategy. You know your partners. Fan out to your designated positions. Clear the immediate area, then move on to the next position. Do this until the town is clear. We return here safely. Seems simple enough. You cannot fail if you resolutely determine that you will not. But I must remind you again, if any member of our team is infected, he must be treated as an enemy to be dispatched accordingly. There can be no exception to this rule. President Lincoln, I cannot support this mission. Murdering innocent people in cold blood is simply unacceptable to me. Does anyone else have qualms about the ethics of our task? Very well. Mr. Wilkinson, you keep watch over Miss Mary Owen. She's feeling poorly this morning. Comfort her if she needs anything. Yes, sir, Mr. President. We'll see how Mr. Hopkins fares with our prisoners. Now, in light of Mr. Wilkinson's decision, Mr. Penn, you accompany Mr. Garrett. Mr. Roosevelt, you stay here. I will not, Mr. President. Very well, then. You shall join Miss Owen and me. Let us take a moment to remember Agents Pike, Dunbar, and Kelly. These brave men who struggled and died here have consecrated this ground. And it is for us, the living, to finish the work which they so nobly advanced. They should not have died in vain. Yeah.
decided against ah! himself cannot stand. Yes, Mr. President. That's all of them. Could not say. But we've done well thus far. Maybe we should head back to the fort, get some rest. I'm not tired. Once more, into the breach. Lincoln's whore. A great lost love for the President of the United States. It's nothing but a harlot. What would the cream of Washington society make of you, my dear? <laughs> it's just all entirely too rich. Hardly the rosy glow of youth affects your cheek, Miss Owens. Don't go anywhere. which they have treated you, and for what crimes? Insubordination? Cowardice? No. We're getting sick. Ainsley? George Ainsley from Canterville. Can't be. After all these years, here you are. While this fool in a stone pipe hat trains and walks about, whilst you, the fine southern gentleman, brought away in a prison cell, makes me sick to my stomach. You should make no secret. I am not what I appear to be. My friend, I am a secret agent. No, not merely an agent of Lincoln's Secret Service, but an agent of the glorious Confederacy. Using the skills I have developed over a lifetime in the theater, I have fooled everyone, including the president himself. <laughs> a toast to me and my ability. I thank you, George. You are too kind. Here's to your health. I believe you understand me. Yes. I believe they're quite mistaken about you, Major Ainsley. You wouldn't hurt me, would you? A fellow son of Dixie? Say, why don't you get back into the fight? Get your boots on the ground, some dirt underneath your fingernails. I admit that, metaphorically speaking. I just need to find the key to the lock. You're free. You're free to return to the field of battle, George. George, no. No, George. No!
sure to keep up with me inwardly. All right, make a stand here. I don't take orders from you, Rebel. I was given orders. I was just simply saying that we. I don't much didn't... care for the cut of your jib, Greyback. We need to get out of here. Easy, easy. Uh, maybe we can find something of use in there. There it is. It's worth a shot. At the very least, we can lie low until they leave. They're not going anywhere until we send them on their way. But for the last time, traitor, I do not take orders from Greybacks. You want to stay here and die? That's your prerogative. You to hide here till the battle's over. No, sir. I want to fight. All right, then. Let's try this. How are you fixing for ammunition? Running low. How about we hide in there until the coast clears? Hide? No! I don't want it! Live to fight another day, as they say. Please? Vantage point upstairs. Dark. Say, why don't you? Toss me the gun. He bit you. What? It's nothing. The gun. There's more coming. What's the matter with you? A witch, Teddy. Always bear in mind your own resolution to succeed is more important than any one thing. We've all got bullseyes in the forehead as far as I'm concerned, Mr. President. 
To the left, Mr. President! Please aid Mary. She's in so much pain. Lord, I humbly beseech you. Grant me wisdom to see the way clear. Let me help these walking dead find their final resting place. Help me to end their torture and misery. And show them the way to your eternal forgiveness. soul may go to heaven, but I desire that his soul may be as damned and black as hell. So where to it goes? I will kill him. Mr. Garrett, if you have a moment. Yes, sir. How do you come to be fighting on the wrong side of history? I was born in Alabama. Grew up on a plantation in Haynesville. That's in Louisiana. I'm no supporter of slavery, Mr. President, but down there it was a way of life. When all the men in my family and parish started to join up, it just seemed a thing to do. I was young. And now? Well, this zombie affliction, as Mr. Brown calls it, it's Got me in the mind of slavery. It's wrong, but it's here. It should be dead, but it lives on. And if we don't find a way to stop it, not only will it tear this country to pieces, but it'll be the end of life as we know it. You're wise beyond your years, Mr. Garrett. I wonder, what are your plans when this great conflagration ends? Singing hmm? about heading out west and becoming a cowboy, sir. You could have an impressive career in politics. Or criminal justice, should you so choose. Maybe so, but uh, I'd rather start a family and ride horses. An appealing path, to be sure. I understand it went well. Not well enough. I'm in despair, Mary. Now I pray for guidance, but I see nothing. Have you spoken with General Jackson? Now why would I have? He's a man of great skill. 
knowledge and bravery, Abe. He may have an idea. Well, he's been unwilling to assist us thus far. Perhaps that will change as the situation grows more desperate. Sir, how are we helping our cause by remaining here waiting to die? Some things are worth dying for, Corporal. Yes, sir. Brave men have been demonstrating that all around us. You refer to the Yankees. I do. Their cause is just. I believe in your heart you agree. Corporal, one has a duty to do what is right. The very end of the day, isn't that the higher calling? To do what you know is right? One must also follow orders. You, you can't betray the trust that others greater than yourself have put in you. We took an oath, you and I, to defend the Confederacy. General, all I know is if this infection spreads, there won't be a Confederacy left to defend. I have something to show you, Mr. Lee. Mr. President. Trust this may be of some use in your effort? It certainly may. You understand what I must do with this, yes? The only remaining available option. I do. Well, then I thank you, sir. And this fort has other secrets, including a tunnel system which culminates in a secret exit. Don't they teach you how to throw like a man in New York City? <laughs> Come on, Teddy, you can do it.
think it's time, sir. Are they all inside the fort? Just about. All right, then! Lit the fuse. Got about another minute. It's time to go, General. A few moments more, Mr. President. Oh, if you would, General. It's time to move. Something's wrong. There's a few seconds left yet. We should get to safety. You take the general, Mr. Brown. Now, without you, Mr. President. Problem with the fuse? While you escape, I'll relight the fuse. No. I will. General, no. Now, Mr. President? Most of those men were Confederate soldiers. It's altogether fitting and proper that I should do this. Great man, brave warrior, to the very end. You allowed the generals to die? How? How could you? It seems you did it, Abe. I don't know. We shall see. And now? Oh, mother! My darling, I believe the moment has come. No! So, there has to be a cure. Doctors grow wiser every day. Don't they, Mr. Lincoln? They do indeed. But not in time for me. Sophia. My dearest. It's time for us to say goodbye. Mary. Hey. 
few will note, no long remember what we say here. But they'll never forget what we've done. And now, it's for you, the living, to finish this work. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. Seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure met upon a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of this field as a final resting place to those who here gave their lives that the nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here they can never forget what they did here. It is rather for us, the living, to be dedicated to the great task remaining before us. We here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and the government of the people by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. How's our patient? The same, more or less. And your research? I'm no further along than I was a year and a half ago. Honestly, Mr. President, I think it would be in the best interest of no, all concerned. No! You find a cure. Not only for her sake, but for the next time this insidious disease appears. Can't you see how vital it is? Perhaps I'm not the man for the job. You know more about this affliction than anyone. But I know nothing. Sorry it's been so long since my last visit. Cessation of hostilities has caused as many problems as the war itself. Now they treat you. These people that I pay so handsomely for their service. And their silence. Doctor, this level of care is unacceptable. No one wants to go near it, Mr. President. Can you blame them? Victory's brought its own challenges. There's some who wish to punish itself while I'm seeking the restoration of the Union. They don't understand. This is the time to bind up the nation's wounds, not to deepen them. We face opposition to our efforts from every quarter, even from old friends. Do you remember Mr. Wilkinson from our days in Savannah? Hmm? Yeah. His true identity John Wilkes Booth, the reacting family. I'm 
informants report that he's been meeting at Sriracha boarding house in town. He's plotting my kidnapping, rape assassination. Have no fear. We watched him closely, and I'm well protected at all times. Thank you, Mary. 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 Mary? Mary? Ah, ah, ah. Oh, my love. Turn me in. No! Let me clean that up for you. Have you a fast horse? Yes. Have you paper and ink? I must send an urgent message to Surratt's boarding house. Go! Oh! Message for you. From whom? He wouldn't say his name. Thank you. Louis! <laughs> George! You won't believe our good fortune! Oh, I look terrible. Don't die, Mr. Lincoln. My first night out in such a long time, I want to make an impression, but oh, I look awful, don't I? You look as beautiful as ever, my dear. Thank you, Father. <laughs> <laughs> 